Originally, the tiny house was for me, but after going through the build process. What's up, you guys? So for today's video, I'm going to be reacting to $35,000 for a tiny home in Atlanta, Georgia. Somebody sent me this particular video and by somebody sent me, I really mean that I saw it on YouTube and wanted to react to it, uh, about a young lady in my backyard here in Atlanta, Georgia that created her own tiny home for $35,000. Super excited to dig in and if you enjoy content like this, be sure to let me know in the comments below and hit the thumbs up button. All right, let's check it out. People are very surprised by the fact that this tiny house is less than 300 square feet, yet I have everything that I need. First of all, that's a really nice house and great use of space so far uh, for this to be a tiny home. All right, let's keep going. I do not see myself getting rid of this property anytime soon. This tiny house is definitely like a baby to me. Hi, welcome to my tiny house in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Pre Okay, so it looks like the tiny house is actually in the back of an existing property. So uh, what I'm guessing is that she owns the property in the front and within your space, uh, you can you can do quite a bit, especially if you live in a place like Georgia where land is plentiful. Let's see how she pulled this off. Precious Price, I am 26 years old and I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I built a tiny house in my backyard for about $35,000 I decided to build this tiny home because my house, my three bedroom, two and a half bathroom house felt too large for me. After looking in the backyard, realizing that, hey, if I put a tiny house back there, I'll be able to move in and then I can fully rent this house out. That's a great strategy, by the way, especially for those of you that are interested in something called house hacking, which is a really great strategy to get into real estate investing. What she did was she took it to the extreme, obviously, um, by buying the home that she's in, and I'm assuming she got it under uh, an FHA loan or only requires you to put down 3.5%, and then she just built a tiny home in the backyard, and then it sounds like she's gonna be renting out the rest of the space uh, at the main house for passive income, so that's pretty dope. I purchased this property that the tiny house sits behind in October of 2019, and the purchase price for this home was $196,000. I was renting the primary structure full time because I was working as a consultant and traveling during the week. So I had the flexibility to rent it out at least Monday through Fridays. That's a dull strategy. If you're not in that house, you know, why not use each bedroom and rent out each bedroom, uh, maybe on Airbnb, you know, or something of that nature. Uh, and make money, especially if you have a type of career, you know, that you're rarely home. Uh, that's a fantastic strategy that she was already doing before she built the tiny home. Um, so now she's just added even more cash flow to an existing property. So the initial plan for the tiny house was in the middle of the global pandemic. Okay, so as you see here, um, of course, that existing structure was already scoped out and specced out, but to build a, an additional structure on the property, um, you have to go about it the right way. So you got to get your permits, you know, make sure you do, you're doing everything legally that you're supposed to do, because when you go to sell that house, uh, or any real estate agent worth, worth their weight is going to make sure that any additional add-ons that were done to the property um, it's been documented and, and whatnot with, with the with the county. So it uh, looks like the total cost to get all that done was about $2,000. So that's, that's not too bad to have been able to do that. So I actually did have a good amount of money saved. I was already doing short-term rentals within my primary home for about six months. Once we were able to get started with the build and I was able to begin renting out the home again, I pretty much just used those funds or those earnings from Airbnb to then go toward this structure and finishing it. That's what you call reinvesting rather than going and buying uh, a Gucci bag or a Telfar bag. No, no knock to anybody that owns loans. We own a couple. But she took her money and she reinvested it into an additional cash flowing property. So she turned one asset that was generating income. She took the proceeds from that asset and used it to create another income producing asset. Super dope. Super dope. All right, let's keep going. 
I started building a tiny house, how I financed it was through my own credit cards in addition to cashing out a few of the stocks that I had from my nine to five. Obviously, you you wouldn't typically recommend because for a tiny home, uh, last I checked, you, you can't get an official, um, for this type of way that she built it, there are tiny home communities that you can finance uh, directly through a lender. But for this particular type of structure, you know, having to, you know, cash out credit cards and things of that nature. You just got to be careful and make sure that that asset starts generating income as quickly as possible, because obviously if she's uh, maxing out credit cards and she didn't transfer that balance to, uh, you know, a no APR type of a credit card situation, um, she's going to have to start making payments on that thing fairly quickly. So I'm assuming that she started cash flowing on this property uh, immediately once she, she built it out. But, you know, we'll find out. She's probably using the assets, again, that she's get, getting from a monthly standpoint from Airbnb for her main property uh, in order to pay this down. But let's see how she got it done. So my budget for building the tiny house was about $25,000. By the time we finished, we were over budget $10,000 and spent total $35,000. Yeah, when you are in... <laughs> When you're in real estate on the fix and flip side, or in her case, the construction side, it's always going to be more than you budget for. So you're going to want to make sure from a liquidity standpoint that you've got plenty of money for things that not only could possibly come up, but more than likely will happen uh, when you're in the middle of your project, whether it's a fix and flip or a complete teardown or a complete build like this was. As the initial contractors were kind of getting through the work, I could slightly tell that some things were being done wrong, but because I was not familiar with this process or I had never gone through anything like this, I let it go on a little further than it needed to. And that is why we lost a little bit of money in the beginning. In addition to that, I would say another major mistake was actually how we were purchasing materials. I purchased a lot up front, including some wood for handmade cabinets that you can probably clearly see we did not do handmade cabinets at all and that was a mistake. see right there is incredibly important to you know work with someone a builder you know maybe a builder of traditional homes that could make a scaled down version i.e a tiny home kind of scenario because it's nothing worse than spending money up front for materials that you end up either you can't use it or you decide you don't want to use it uh, but you can't take that you know, material back in most cases. So that's money that essentially you cannot get back. So you got to be incredibly, incredibly smart and tactical in the planning process, especially with your designs uh, to make sure that it's going to make sense. Uh, and in this case, I, I probably would not have told her to buy all that material up front, but to do it over time as the construction, you know, as the drywall goes up, things of that nature, then begin to buy the other things that you want to put into the home as you go along because you may not you know you may decide you don't need it you get a better better deal on something else different flooring whatever the case is so that stinks that she's already you know wasted money in this capacity stake in a cost on my end originally the tiny house was for me but after going through the build process being over budget behind schedule we immediately ended up deciding to rent it on airbnb just to recoup some of those costs pretty quickly First year we did short-term rentals. The second year we did long-term rentals. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. She brought in $32,000 renting out her tiny home over the past two years. That's an amazing ROI because she paid 35,000 for it. Um, so she's already gotten uh, close to 100% return on that investment, uh, which again, that's just in the first two years, but obviously she's going to continue to make money uh, on this property because Airbnb ain't going nowhere. Um, so that's pretty dope that, you know, she has already made a nice bag um, and not not only not even 24 months uh, since building this. All right, let's keep going. And now I've decided to move into the tiny house myself just to experience some tiny living in addition to saving some cash as well. If I was to describe my tiny home for someone who has never been here, I would literally just describe it as a studio apartment. So immediately when you come in, you are now in the dining slash living room. I That's a very, very functional space. From what I'm seeing, incredibly functional. 
Uh, you can see the kitchen, you know, what's supposedly the kitchen area. That's kind of off to the side. I like the barn doors. Um, I, I like the, the furniture. Everything is laid out. I, I can almost guarantee she got a nice chunk of this from <laughs> Wayfair and <laughs> Ikea. Because uh, I can see it and I can tell. Because my wife and I, we love, we love those kind of places. All right, let's keep going. I would describe the tiny house as very light, airy, open. I made sure to add a ton of windows just to open this. Yeah, there's a lot of good natural light coming into this space. So uh, I'm almost certain that she rents this for uh, a really nice bag on a, on a monthly basis or daily basis because it's a really nice, really nice space. And the whole tiny home thing is very trendy right now. So... Uh, she's probably making a nice bag from this space up and even more so actually adding in mirrors as well to really make it feel larger so the blues kind don't let that go over your head put a lot of mirrors in your space not necessarily if it's a tiny home not just a tiny home but whatever your space is for my real estate investors and things of that nature mirrors and windows natural light natural light natural light and as she mentioned uh, mirrors do a great job just from, you know, just from a perception standpoint of really making a space a lot bigger, uh, making it appear a lot bigger than it is. All right, let's keep going. Kind of gives like a cool feel, but also, again, just opens up the space so that you don't feel like you're just in a shed. You actually feel like you're in a house. And I love this little breakfast nook area. It's usually where I'm grabbing drinks. Once you come around here and through, you are then in the kitchen. The kitchen is honestly my favorite part of the house because a lot of people are really surprised. Now, I would have done stain. I would have done stainless steel uh, for the uh, refrigerator and the microwave, but she probably got a better deal on the black appliances. You know, when you go with the light, airy uh, furniture and kitchen layout and all that stuff in general with your design, that lends itself to uh, more on the stainless steel appliances side. But again, you know, it's a tiny home, so she probably was looking for ways that she could cut cost. But um, uh, if I was her uh, realtor, I, I would have suggested from a retail standpoint uh, that she strongly consider uh, stainless steel appliances throughout. But it, it still looks it still looks really good. All right, let's keep going. That there is, for the most part, a full-size fridge. We have an induction cooktop within the kitchen in addition to a full-size sink. And then there's a ton of counter space, at least for me, it's a pretty good amount. Right across from the kitchen is where we have the bathroom that then slides closed and open for the barn door, which honestly creates a really cool space as well. Now, I don't see laundry facilities, so my guess is that she still goes to the main house uh, to do laundry, but we'll find out. So when we step into the bathroom, we're immediately met with these glass shower doors. It was imperative for me to put glass doors here just because it opens up the space. You're able to see through and it doesn't feel as small. There's a full shower, which is honestly perfect and a little window as well, just because. I just want to give her a shout out again on how functional that space is, because when you think tiny house, you definitely can start to feel a little bit of claustrophobia, uh, especially unless you're just into that kind of thing. Um, but the fact that she was able to put a shower, you know, that big, obviously uh, in tiny homes, it's going to be more length versus width, um, which is how it appears that the, the tiny house shower here is is created. But I, I am incredibly impressed with whomever helped her do the design to begin with, because Literally, it's a tiny home and you can tell it is, but it's still very, very uh, spacious and functional. So you're not like climbing on top of each other to walk around. Obviously, she's in there. It looks like you could probably fit like two or three people in that bathroom, which is really, really good for a tiny home. All right, let's keep going. Because again, every single space must have windows to just make it feel bigger. And then coming around, just adding more shelf space as well, just so that I can store even more. And of course, once you turn around from that bathroom, you then see the library ladder, which leads up to the loft. Okay, so in a tiny home, definitely you're going to see situations where the uh, sleeping space is going to be elevated. Uh, so it's very, very tight <laughs> from what I'm seeing here. Incredibly tight space. Um, I don't really know 
how one, when you get up there, I mean, it looks like you probably have to, you know, bear crawl your way up out of there every morning. So, you know, that might be a, a turnoff for some people, but, you know, it's it's a still a very functional space. Obviously, when you're sleeping, um, you're sleeping horizontally anyway, but um, definitely if you're a tall person, <laughs> this is, this is going to be uh, quite problematic, but let's keep going. One thing that I don't particularly enjoy about the tiny home is the clearance within the loft. All you can really do up there is lay down and sleep. I would love- Told y'all, I told y'all. Yeah, she can't really do anything up there. I mean, I guess she could have elevated the, the height a little bit more uh, of that space. I mean, you, when you built it out, you can do whatever you want to do, but that may be something that she didn't plan for. But let's, let's keep going. Of it, if there was a little more clearance and a little more space for me at least to sit upright and maybe have a little bookshelf up there as well. I'm pretty sure she's going to mention this already, but she's got so much backyard space with a 70 feet by 104 feet. You legit can build, she could probably build quite a few tiny homes back there. Um, no cap, as the kids say. I mean, that's a huge backyard, a huge backyard. So all it takes is just taking the same paperwork that you submitted to your local county and doing it in, you know, as many as you, you think you can comfortably fit back there that would not be, you know, a hindrance to the, you know, overall uh, use of that area for folks. But, I mean, she low-key could fit. I mean, let me know in the comments below how many tiny homes you think she could put down there. But from what, what I see, you can fit at least four additional tiny homes and so and now that she's already done one then she knows the the best ways and the cheaper ways to go ahead and get this same uh home built again and the mistakes that she made but she legit could build four homes back there easily from from the space i'm seeing and now you have turned again a single purchase into multiple streams of income from one space because i have to assume and guess that she lives in a community that does not have any uh hoa or any issues like that or because she was able to build it um, which is something that i as a real estate agent uh can look out for if this is something you're thinking about doing um just my final plug or my only plug uh, if you're interested in buying a home anywhere in the united states my team and i were on all 50 states so uh, give me a shout by clicking the link below but um, this is dope. She could definitely do quite a few, quite quite a few homes in this backyard. All right, let's keep going. We're almost done. So it's pretty spacious, honestly. The folks in the primary home totally have privacy from the people in the tiny house. There's actually even a separate trail or entrance on the other side of the house that folks who are renting the tiny home can then use to access the house. So they totally actually don't even interact for the most part out. That's going to be really key when you are uh, you have rental property, especially on the Airbnb side. Individual privacy is going to be very important because folks don't want to run into each other, you know, unless that's part of the Airbnb. Let's say you're uh, you have a home, you have four bedrooms and you rent out each bedroom. It's kind of understood that folks are going to have to interact with e each other. But when it's a space like this having a separate entry and exit from the main property is going to be uh, a game changer and it's going to definitely keep your reviews where they need to be. All right, let's keep going. Outside of if they want to share the fire pit access in the backyard. I do have a mortgage on this home currently and the price that I pay per month for that mortgage is about $1,200. With renting the home out how I am now, the renters or the tenants actually pay that mortgage cost and then some. So the main- and That's game changing. That's incredibly game changing. Not only are you building equity through your tenants paying down your mortgage, but now you have literally, <laughs> You've turned one investment into multiple investments and multiple exit strategies that, I mean, if I were her, I would not sell this at all, ever, um, because it's just so much that she's done to it and she can continue to do to it. And I'm not sure what part of town this particular uh, property is in, 
but let's just say there's more businesses that come to that area. So now she has the potential to not only skyrocket her value just by owning real estate, she's making cash flow on it <laughs> from day one. And as I mentioned, I'm pretty sure she's going to say it, that she's going to build other properties either on, on the property or elsewhere. But let's keep going. Main house, it's a three bedroom, two and a half bathroom home that I rent out as separate suites. So three separate suites. Each suite costs anywhere between about $850 to $1,000 per month, depending on whether or not there is a private bathroom or a shared bathroom. So now being in the tiny house myself, in addition to saving costs, which was a major driver for me moving back here, the other piece was actually getting ready to start the next project or build that I'd like to do on this lot. I do have the option to extend the livable space that I have within the primary home. So at that point, we would have the primary house, the attached guest suite, and then of course this tiny house that sits in the backyard. Honestly, putting a structure in your backyard provides a ton of options, whether it's actual rental income like I've been able to do, or even again, just like a secondary structure that you may be able to live out of yourself and then rent your primary home. In addition to just the options I'm super excited that it's gonna create for my family long-term in terms of maybe some multi-generational living down the line. Didn't I tell y'all she wasn't gonna sell that no time soon? When you think about all of the creative things that you can do with real estate, it's, it's why I'm in this business. It's exactly why I'm in this business. There's so many creative ways. Obviously, a tiny home may not necessarily be your cup of tea. You might not uh, be willing to deal with it, but I always say in this thing called life, you gotta choose your uncomfortable. So if you're looking to create multiple streams of income and you're in a three bedroom home, you're only really there uh, maybe a couple days out of the month or some other unique situation, why not consider renting out the other rooms in your home? Or if you have the space and you're in a community that will allow it, why not consider building a tiny home uh, on your property in the back and making additional income? I mean, she's got money coming in from multiple places. Not only is she renting out the front of the home, but when she's not in the tiny home, she can rent that space out as well. And that's just the dope thing about real estate. So I hope you enjoyed today's reaction video. Let me know in the comments below what was a takeaway for you. Could you consider a tiny home living if it'll allow you to cash flow even more on a property, but also have the privacy of not having to run into your tenants on a regular basis if you don't want to? But let me know in the comments below. And until the next video, it's your boy Marvin signing out. Are you a real estate agent looking to jumpstart your career? Join our online agent network and gain access to the support and resources you need to succeed. One of the most effective ways to attract clients in this industry is through social media. And I can tell you in my entire time as a real estate professional, I have not knocked on one door and yet I've still generated several million dollars worth of sales per year. And our team is here to help you do the same thing. Click the link in today's show notes today or visit IamTheTribe.com to learn more about this amazing opportunity.